Rushing Wind Biker Church at 129 Knickerbocker Avenue in Bohemia, New York, the crossroad of freedom and faith. God bless you. How are we doing? Awesome. Happy New Year. You excited to move into the new year? Yeah. Sounds like the left side is much more excited than the right side. Yeah. Is the right side excited? Uh, yes. Jerry's yeah. <laughs> left side, right side. <laughs> we got it, Adrian. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> let's, let's, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Let's open in prayer. Father, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for this day. <sighs> Lord, we thank you for a new year. We thank you for a new direction. Lord, we thank you that you want to start a new thing. But more importantly, we want to see what you want us to do going forward in this year. Lord, just uh, fill your people tonight. Give them an ear to hear. Let them get excited. No matter what they're coming out of in 2016, to be excited about what you're going to do in them and through them in 2017. We want to honor you with our life. We want to keep our eyes open to what you want us to do. And Lord, we want to see your glory in our life. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, how many people have gotten a new car in the last year? <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Okay. This is this is this is my my uh, my experience with with cars, right? And I think you'll kind of understand where I'm going eventually, hopefully by the end of the night. Um, you know, we, we go and we, we buy a car, and most of the people here were buying what is called a pre-used vehicle, or what do they call it? Previously owned, certified pre-owned vehicle, a used vehicle, right? Um, and, and, and we tell someone, and we've gotten really two vehicles in the last year that we didn't have before, we got a new car. And it's new to me, right? Yeah. Don't we do that? Yes. It's new to me. It's to me. All right? Uh, <laughs> the automatic windows don't work. I got a crank. But it's my new car, you know? And, and, and we look at this thing called New Year, and, and I think a lot of times we move into the New Year with almost the same attitude as, uh, as when we pick up a car that has mileage on it already. You know, it's got, it's got stuff. You know, I mean, it's got a little oil leak. It's got a little carburetor thing. Maybe it makes a little noise. You know, maybe the exhaust isn't what it should be. But it's our new car, right? Yep. And we're excited because it's obviously better than the old car. And so it's a new car. And I think most of people, most people and, and most of us, we move into the new year with almost the same attitude that we move into the new year but it's new it's kind of like old and new it's like new but there's stuff that comes with the new year because we're bringing stuff with us from the old year you know and, and instead of looking at a new year as trading in the old year we tend to carry some of the problems and the issues and the challenges of the old year with us into the into the new year and and what what really prompted this message because um, I, I knew what direction I wanted to go is um, our um, our president-elect about a week and a half ago you know this whole thing with Russia and that and, um, and, and our current president did what he had to do what he felt he had to do and so it got a little bit tense and then Donald Trump said it's just time we got to move on you know and just move forward exactly. and forget about this right. you know because most of us and he knew that there's nothing he could really do about the situation at the moment you know down the road there may be things that he could do to deal but right now there's nothing nothing he could do and what happens is is we do the same thing we move into a new year but we have a lot of things that we carry into the new year and we stay engaged in fights we shouldn't stay in. We stay with burdens that we really, we can't do anything about it. We can't solve anything, but we carry those things with us. And so what I want to talk about today is, is moving into 2017 and no matter what happened in 2016, 
whatever was going on in your life, whether it was, a, it was a hard year, a challenging year, or even if it was a good year, let's move on. Because God is moving forward. You know, and, and I put a thing out um, a couple days ago, and, and we move into this new year, and, you know, we can carry the stuff from last year in there, even though it's a new year. We have resolutions. You know, I'm going to lose weight. Yeah. That, that never has worked for me. I don't know about anybody out there. It's never worked for me. So I don't even bother anymore because I'm just fooling myself. You know, I can just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into this new year, I'm going to lose weight, and God's just sitting. Who do you think you're kidding? <laughs> yeah. You know? and, and we do this with a lot of things, and we carry those things into the next year. And, and God wants us to forget about the past. Some people actually have had pretty good 2016. And, 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 the, and the thing about that is we can, we can rest on the victories of the past. You know, so we have two postures going into this year. If we've had a hard year, we tend, tend to look, look down and we're kind of depressed and maybe hopeful, but we're not looking straight ahead. And we miss all the things God has for us. And then those that are having a good year, they're just they're praising God and they're looking to heaven and they're missing what God has today. You know, they, they, they don't see that there's a continuum of this life. Just because we had a good 2016 doesn't mean you're going to have a good 2017. Because no one knows the future. You know, the future's in God's hands. So we can't make assumptions, bad or good, moving forward. And, and I want to start with a, a scripture in Isaiah. Isaiah 43 verses 18 to 19. It's just right out there. Don't call to, to mind the former things. Don't worry about what happened before. Or ponder the things of the past. Don't even let them enter your mind as a thought. Behold, I will do something new. Amen. God wants to do something new in every one of your lives this year. You know, it doesn't matter what happened before. You know, if you're here and you had a good last year, some people sit and, well, I just want God to keep doing what he's doing. That's a totally wrong posture to be in. Because whatever God has done for you in the past year, he's got better things up the road. Amen. You know, because anything you want to hold in your hand, even as a victory, can slip right through your hands if you're not constantly moving forward and trying to grasp more. And he says, I will do something new. It will spring forth, but will you even be aware of it? You know, like I said, we could be looking down and miss what God has because we're so wrapped up in what happened before. Or we could just be so high-minded that our, our head's in the clouds and we're, we're spending too much time dwelling in the victories and the good things God has done in the past to actually see the direction. And, and that's, a, that's a time you slip a lot. It's time you trip. If you look in the Bible, a lot of times after someone had a mountaintop experience, uh, the enemy was right there. You know, because it's probably the most vulnerable time that we have. And he says to Israel, and he's saying to us, I will even make a roadway in the wilderness. I'll make rivers in the desert. And you may be here tonight, and the future looks like a wilderness. And the future looks dark because of what's happened before. You know, maybe you're moving forward and you don't see a lot of hope in your life. You don't see a lot of things there. We still have to press forward and know that God has good things. Amen. And God promises us that he will create a road in the middle of that wilderness where you don't see a way. You know, it's just like the future, like there's no direction. I don't know where I'm going. You know, what, what's happened in the past has scrambled my brains and I, I just see nothing but a vast wasteland. God promises that he will make a road if you see it and look for it. And if you move in, into the new year and you, you, you have this wilderness and you have a darkness and you have a, a thirst for more, he promises that he will create a river of life within that new year. And he promises that. He promises that. We have to move into the new year believing. You know, it's, it's what our faith is all about, actually having faith. You know, but in order to do that, you have to move on. You have to move on. You know, um, 
God says there will be a road there even though you don't see it. How many people believe that? Do you believe that? Yes. Yeah. And even though you're thirsting for life and, and looking into this year or looking into your life and the future that you see, you just don't see that quench, that, that thirst for life, whatever it is, whether it's purpose, whether it's relationship, whether it's financial. You just don't see possibilities. Well, God promises if you keep your eyes open and don't get obsessed with your life and what's going on, He will create a river in a vast wasteland that you may see up ahead. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are what? Passed away. And all things become new. So whatever you've gone through in this past year, the past couple of years, all right, that should all be put behind you. Amen? Because you're not going to move forward if you don't let go of the things of the past. The good and the challenging. In Mark chapter 2, verse 21, and this talks about us, we are believers. We have been renewed. We are a new creation. And Jesus said, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the patch will pull away and the new from the old, and it'll be worse. Uh, the tear will be worse than it was before. No one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine will be lost in the skins as well. But one puts new wine into new wineskins. When he talks about new wineskins, we are a new creation. We need to realize we are a new creation. We need to understand that in Christ we are a new cleansed vessel for the Holy Spirit to fill. Unless we allow the past to linger and, and create contamination into what God puts in. And then what will happen is just everything runs amok and you end up worse than you were in the beginning. You know, because you, if you start adding the Holy Spirit to a life that is not based on God and you carry all the darkness and all the issues into this new life life actually can be worse you need to be freed of everything you carried into this new year so you're um, I believe you know you're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ right? Amen. right? you're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ somebody's excited yeah, and so you you need to you need to absorb that, and you need to internalize that, so you actually believe it. You know, if you are actually bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, do you think that God is going to give you a previously owned vehicle, or is God going to give you a brand new vehicle? See, the problem is we don't understand and we don't believe the value of Jesus Christ. We don't believe the value of Jesus Christ. You know, it's like we go into a new car dealership and we see that new car, but there's no way I can afford that. And so we settle. And we take something old and we call it new because it's new to us. But it's got the damage and the wear and tear of what was already done. See, when you step into this life in Christ and you realize that you are a new creation, you're now getting a life that has the odometer on zero. There's nowhere on the tires. There's nowhere on the engine. You have all the power. You have all the capabilities of a brand new life. But we bring stuff from the past. Don't we? We kind of all do that. <coughs> Philippians says brothers I do not consider that I have made it on my own but one thing I, I do forgetting what's behind me this is all to the scriptures we move into this new year we need to believe that God is not going to allow what happened before to affect what happens in the future but we don't 
We don't believe that that won't affect that. And we stay in battles that we shouldn't stay in. You know, it's like what I said. This, he, he said, move on. It's time to move on. Most of us are in battles right now. We ended this year in a battle. It could be relational, relational, it could be financial, it could be all kinds of things. And there's literally nothing you can do about it in the moment. How many people have had has things in their life? I think most of us do, don't we? But what the enemy wants you to do is he wants you to keep engaged in a battle that there's really nothing you can accomplish right now. See, most of those battles are doing nothing more than keeping you occupied and keeping you from moving forward. See, if you disengage from those, mentally and spiritually, you might have financial difficulties. Take your mind and your spirit off of it and move into the new year and just whatever work you do, you do. Whatever pay you get, you get. Whatever bills you can pay, you pay. And you don't worry about what's there lingering. Because what will happen is if you can move into that, if there are things that must be taken care of, God will reunite you with those things up the road when you're capable of taking care of them. Because if you keep carrying them, they're actually going to inhibit you from creating the resources, spiritual, tangible, and otherwise, from actually taking care of the things that you're wrestling with. You're preventing your own progress. And we need to move into this next year, leaving it all behind. We're not going to do that song. It popped into my head. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. See, God has a plan for every one of your lives. Amen. Amen. What does it say in Jeremiah? I know I have the plans for you. So God is saying, I know I have plans for you. The problem is we don't know that God has plans for us. Right? Because if we knew God had a plan for us, we would probably step into that plan and on that path much more easily. But we don't believe that God has a plan for us. And so we have to believe God and take him at his word. Now what is God's plan for you? I have a plan to prosper you. And I have a plan not to harm you. And I have a plan for a future. Alright? Now, I've talked about this before. What Jeremiah is saying, what God is saying to Jeremiah, is without God and without his plan, you don't have a future. Just because you wake up tomorrow and you move into 2017 doesn't mean you've engaged in the future. Because if you don't get rid of everything behind you, you're just living in the past. And you're dragging the past along with you into whatever you had in the past. And you never progress. And you never get free of anything. And God is trying to shake you free of all the things that are attached to you. You know, as I was going through this, uh, I, had a, I had a picture of um, a space shuttle. Rockets. Anybody ever watch a space shuttle take off? Yeah, I can't, we've kind of seen it on television, right? <laughs> we've just come off Christmas. I don't think it's inconsequential that Christmas is a week before New Year's. I think it's perfectly timed. Because Christmas is an opportunity for us to really grasp and understand what God did for us process it for a week and then start the race again January 1st. If you ever watch the space shuttle take off, it's really, really interesting when you, you see, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then flames and smoke, and then towers are falling and lines are coming up. But you ever notice it doesn't go anywhere for a couple of seconds? It kind of hovers there. Because it's building up the thrust, it's building up all the power, Actually, all the things that it's been attached to, it's destroying by the very flame that's going to project it into the heavens. It's exactly what God is doing if we allow him in that space between Christmas and New Year's. He's giving us a space of time that we have, we have a, a, a time that we're going to take off. But the time that the countdown hits zero is before Zero is the day that God stepped into this world and God gave his only son. And we have the opportunity to process that for a week 
Because New Year's, there's just something about, you know, the, the, the midnight, New Year's Eve. It's the beginning of a new year. And it's the beginning of a new thing. And we have an opportunity because we're humans and we, we need, we just need these little indication things. You know, we need something to, you know, give me a day that I can start new. Give me a moment, you know, just plan it in advance. Because if I just try to start something new on my own, I'm never going to get the momentum. It's never going to happen. And so I think it's, I believe it's by design. You know, we, we, we literally celebrate Christmas three months after Christ actually was born. And it was placed one week to the day before a new year. And, and it's just like this week we have the opportunity to build the power, the conviction, the faith, and the understanding that is going to project us into 2017. But it shakes us. So you have to allow it to shake us. If you've gone through things in this past year, if you're going through things right now, God is shaking you free. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. If you go to Hebrews chapter 12, this is something added to my message literally this morning because I heard another message and this kind of works very well with my, my uh, space shuttle thing. <laughs> yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, it's not up there because I didn't have enough time to put it up there. So you're going to have to just pay attention for a moment. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26. It says, And his voice shook the earth. And now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but I will also shake the heaven. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken. Do you understand that? Removing the things in your life that can be shaken, so that the things which cannot be shaken away will remain. So the things you've gone through the things you're going through. God is allowing your life to be shaken. Just shaken so all this stuff flies off of you. All the burdens, all the cares, all the worries. We hate the process, don't we? All right? It's like somebody's shaking you and everything, you know, holding you upside down. Your change is falling out of your pockets. Everything's going on. All right? God is trying to strip you of everything. Because as long as you have something in you that can be shaken, you can be shaken. But when God allows you to go through the process of having those things shaken from you, what will be left when you have the pure faith and you just fall in love with Jesus and all the cares fall away? Yes, the bills are there and the stuff is there. But you keep your eyes on Jesus. And then you can't be shaken. You stand in a place of peace. You stand in a place of comfort. You know, one other illustration popped in my head when I was coming here today is, you know, Camille will probably understand this better than most. You know what a centrifuge is? Yeah. You know, it's something they use to separate parts of a, of a, of a liquid or a sub, sub, substrate. I don't know what they call it. I'm too many years out of chemistry. I don't remember what actually the words are. So they put test tubes in this thing and they spin it like ridiculously fast and it separates you know, things that are heavy go to the outside and you can separate things. Sometimes don't you feel like your life is just, you, you're spinning around and you're getting nowhere? Well, God is shaking everything and he's spinning everything so that he can get all the stuff concentrated in one place, which actually makes it easier for you to eliminate it. Because that's what a centrifuge does. It, it purifies, it separates by spinning so that gravity and the forces, the, the G-forces and centrifugal force will separate you from your cares and from your worries. It's not a fun process. You're either, you're either spinning around like crazy or you're being shaken like ridiculous. <laughs> but understand that everything you've gone through, everything that I've gone through and we've gone through in the last year, God is trying to do a new thing. Amen. In order to do a new thing, He needs to shake you free of all the old things so that tomorrow you can wake up or you can leave here today. It's 2017. Today is a new day. We can move forward if we allow God to have shaken everything off. 
The problem we have sometimes is we hold on to things even though God is shaking us like crazy. And we wonder why we don't have the victory. It's because he's trying to shake everything loose and you're holding on to things that you don't need to hold on to. Just because they're yours. Alright? Understand nothing is yours. It is all God's. Your problems are God's. They're not yours. Your health issues are God's issues, not yours. You know? You belong to God. Everything about you belongs to God. Just let go of everything. And it will be, I believe, a short season. Once you let go of everything, the shaking will stop not long after. Because you're allowing God to shake you free of everything. And you'll find that all of a sudden you'll be overwhelmed with a peace. Because I don't have to worry about that. It's not mine anymore. It's God's. You know? And, and you put it all behind you. And you move forward. And all through scriptures, Paul says, I don't look at those things that are behind me. But I press forward for the cause and the direction of Jesus Christ. You know, many of you have had your life shaken this year. 2016 was a challenging year for many people here. Financially, relationally, family, some physically. Understand that through everything that you've gone through, even if you look into 2017 and you see a vast wasteland and you see a wilderness, if you keep your eyes open and look straight ahead down the road to the cross, that a roadway will appear in the middle of the wilderness. And if you allow your faith to take you forward into what looks like nothingness right now or maybe even worse things right now because sometimes the enemy can make that look worse than what we're in now God promises that he will create a river of life that you will find joy in the middle of your sorrow and all these things will be relieved of you you know don't hold on to anything understand that God loves you enough to shake everything off those things you don't like it's because God loves you you understand that it's only because God loves you a good father will do whatever he has to do to eliminate the bad from his children even if he's got to shake them hold them upside down and get all the drugs out of their pockets and shake everything free he'll do whatever he's got to do because he's a loving father and so don't be upset at the process but don't dwell in the process don't hold on and so the shaking keeps going on leave it in 2016 amen, amen. leave it in last year let's make this year the year that we get a clean start that we understand that God wants to do a new thing there will be people here that will miss it. It's the sad part. There are people here tonight that will miss the new thing that God has for them. Will it be you? It's up to us. In order for us to see and keep our eyes open, we need to get rid of everything and move forward and look up. Keep our heads up. Now keep our heads high and mighty but keep our heads in the direction God has us. Otherwise, you will miss it. I just pray that the majority of you see this. And don't let the burdens that might pop up in the next week keep them from getting into the second week. Just let it slip right through your hands and let God have it. Because some of us have had a pretty okay year. You know? I mean, I've had a lot of bad years. This wasn't one of the really bad years. Right? But the enemy is relentless. Amen? Amen. Alright? So don't leave yourself unprotected. Because I know there's going to be things that the enemy is going to try to put on me. And am I going to sit there and wrestle in a battle that may just do nothing but waste time? 
you know if you disengage in things that you have no control of it doesn't mean you've lost a battle it means you've used godly wisdom we're not supposed to be in battles that we can't win right now all right if that's a battle you're to face God will bring it back to you when it needs to be addressed you will find the majority of things you're wrestling with right now will fade away and you'll never have to deal with them I guarantee you that but we hold on to everything we can't discern because we think everything is our battle <clears throat> I want to end before we have communion um, do you like old hymns? Some like old hymns. Yeah. This one has very repetitive words and lines. And this is something that you may not... You, most of you have probably heard this if you haven't even been in a church that long. But this is a song that really speaks about what this message is about. How many people here have surrendered their life to Christ? Almost everyone here, right? So what did you do? You decided to do what? You decided to follow Jesus. Do you know the song? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back though none go with me still I will follow though none go with me still I will follow though none go with me still I will follow no turning back no turning back the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back the words of those old hymns are the most powerful words ever written you know we get too caught up on the orchestration and the instrumentation of today's music it sounds nice it's more appealing to the ears this is pure scripture this is pure truth you know no turning back eyes on the cross nothing matters amen you know I want to ask um, Jerry and Spock to come up and we're going to uh, share in communion I'll give him my Bible. We, ha we have, uh, for the first time in a long time, a ticking noise in the sound system. <laughs> Just when you think you've heard everything. We as a people, we as a country, for the first time in a long time, have some good things and hope to move into the next year with. You know? It's one less thing we should concern ourselves with. You know, we live in, in a country, we live in a world where it's been very oppressive. There's been hopelessness. There's just been a direction that is so against everything that... that, that we don't hold true and it's been an oppression well let's start at getting rid of that oppression believe that God's doing something amen, amen. and with that behind us let's move on don't get caught up in what's out there pray for me because I can get caught up in what's out there you know because it's very evil and even as we watch the dialogue that's going on the enemy is not accomplishing anything on a lot of levels except keeping people fighting about things that nothing can get done about right now 
it's it's a, a, a message that we need to take hold of in our own life you know move on you know Donald Trump put that in my head <laughs> now he's a man that doesn't move on that's why it impressed me because he wants to fight you, you fight me I'll fight you you say something I'm going to say something and, and it spoke to me that that God put that in his mind where he is with God I really don't know but he realized that in the next couple of weeks there's nothing he could really accomplish so he says let them battle on their own I'm going to move on and God's got a plan and that day's going to come when the road's going to be there and the river's going to be there amen, amen. so let's, uh, let's start living that way if you're here for the first time during communion what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a portion of scripture from 1 Corinthians 13 uh, it's Paul's letter to the church in Corinth it's the first account of the last supper that was ever put on uh, was ever written and then uh, I'm going to lead us in a prayer of self-examination because the uh, scripture is very clear that when we break bread we come to the Lord's table we're supposed to come in with a pure heart with a realization that we are sinners but also with an understanding that God has forgiven all those things and, uh, and then we're going to hand out the, uh, the matzah and the grape juice just hold on to them we're going to partake together it's 1 Corinthians 11 I like the love chapter I'm always there for I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you the Lord Jesus the night he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes therefore whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord but a man must examine himself in so doing he is to eat of the bread, drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks a judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and are sick, and a number have fallen asleep. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. Let's pray. Father, as we, we come to your table, Lord, Lord, we, uh, we thank you for, for your Son. We thank you that your son died, that we might have family. That we are brought here under the, the banner of Jesus Christ. One family. One purpose. One meaning. One love. Lord, we just ask you to help us get this life better. Lord, let us search our hearts and our, our soul and our mind and dig out the things that... Uh, kind of slipped kind of fallen to the wayside uh, mistakes anger words and many other things that many of us struggle with Lord we come to you with a repentant heart Lord we know you're gracious and we know you are willing to forgive us and Lord we ask for that forgiveness and we accept that forgiveness knowing that our sins are removed from us we can never show our gratitude for what your son did to bring us in relationship with you one more time. But Lord, we want to honor you in all things. We thank you for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that takes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name 
Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms will all pass away but there's something about that name amen god wants to do a new thing don't keep saying the same thing every year and not allow him to do the new thing okay drop everything going into this year move forward in christ and watch the glory of the lord Amen. Amen. Father, as we, uh, we leave here today, we just thank you, Lord. <sighs> Lord, that every day can be a brand new day. Lord, that our, our salvation, this born-again experience, really has the strength and the power to be experienced every day we open up our eyes. That every day is a new day. Every day we are literally born again into this life when we open our eyes and a new day is born before us. Father, let us learn to let go of the things from behind and Lord just move forward free of everything in full power in full vision full faith not walking by sight but walking by faith we'll see you do incredible things in your people we thank you for all these things in Jesus name amen. all God's people said amen so we go back to the normal schedule this week just so you know Wednesday is uh, Soup and Sandwich Night. Friday, Bible study, Hebrews 10. Yay. We're back in Bible study. All the normal things. And uh, in case everybody was interested, you know, I was doing a message on a new thing today, so uh, I dressed a little differently today. <laughs> Just in case you haven't noticed, I, I didn't wear a black shirt. You know, the sad part about this is this is all I have that's not black. Okay? I got blue jeans, black jeans, black shirts, and this. So, I just wanted to come up with a new look, and, uh, and I even didn't wear my glasses. I put my bifocal uh, right. contact lenses in, you know, because I wanted to be different today. Because tomorrow, when you wake up, I want you to be different. I want to shake you up. Jerry mentioned we're going to be doing some things with the service. You got a little taste of it today. You know, we had, uh, we had the offering, and then we had a, a song after it. We're trying to get a better flow. We want to get people more engaged and continuing through the service so that we can really maximize our experience with Jesus Christ when we come in here. Amen? Amen. With no lulls in the action, no kind of awkward, silent parts, because we want to just bring you into the God's throne room. We want to we raise you up where you can just praise God and give Him the glory and worship and, and, and just be fed. And so we can move out of here just with a power, you know, like that, that space shuttle. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, thank God for 2017. No matter what you've been through this year, Understand one thing. You're here and you're standing. Amen? Amen? Amen. You're standing. Yep. Nothing has crippled you. Amen. Amen. God bless. And we'll see you uh, later in the week. <laughs> <laughs> He's riding a white horse across this land. He has fire in his eyes and the sword in his hand. He's riding a white horse all across this land. He's calling out to you and me. Will you ride with me? He has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. And he's riding a white horse across this land. He's calling out to you and me. Will you ride with me? Will you ride with me? You say yes. 
where I'm with you And we say yes, Lord We will stand up and fight to be when you say will you ride with me don't want anything down here holding on to me when you say will you ride with me can you see that number no man can number Riding alongside Jesus. <laughs> but he's calling out to us right now. Saying, will you ride with me? And we say, yes. God bless. Have a good week.